President Mohamed Buhari to inaugurate NDDC project in River State tomorrow. Senate President Ahmad Lawan lauds President Buhari's achievements in economic diversification agenda. Northern Governors Forum convene emergency meeting to discuss VAT. In sports, the Tigers win Afro Basket Championship for the third time in a row. The German Social Democrats defeat outgoing Angela Merkel's party in federal elections. Details of these are not stories in just a moment. A very good afternoon to you and welcome to the World News at Noon on Comfort 95.1 FM. I am George Iniabasi. Asien. President Mohamed Buhari has withdrawn his earlier approval that over $209 million and 32 billion naira be released to the Nigerian investors in the maritime industry. The project had been under the Capitage Vessel Finance Fund CVFF, scheme. Minister of Transport Rotimi Amechi made this known while attending the commencement of a wreck removal exercise in Lagos and decided and decried the lack of cohesion and organization among the operators. Amechi, who blamed the maritime operators for the president's decision, urged them to live up to industry expectations and show more commitment to developing the sector. The minister explained that upon assumption of office, he led a government delegation to Singapore, where foreign investors agreed to provide 40% counterpart funding for ship acquisition. He, however, lamented that Nigerian investors have been unable to make any financial commitment on 60% funding five years later, despite the clamoring for indigenous ownership of the shipping industry. And the president will tomorrow inaugurate the Police Barracks Special Protection Unit Base 6 at Omagua in Ikwere local government area of River State. The president will be represented by his vice, Yemi Oshimbajo, to inaugurate the project built by the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDC. The NDC, in a statement issued by its spokesman, Ibitoya Aboshede, said the building is a 66 flat residential quarter and administrative block for police officers in the oil rich state. Aboshede said the project, previously inspected by the NDC interim administrator, Mr. Efiong Akwa, consists of an administrative block, an armory, a gatehouse, underground cell, and 66 units of accommodation. On the economic importance of the project, the Commission said it would add value to the living conditions of the security officers in the Niger Delta region. Meanwhile, a rights group is calling on President Mohamed Buhari to publish names of those indicted for looting 6 trillion naira in the Niger Delta Development Commission, NEDC, between 2000 and 2019, as revealed in the Forensic Audit Report. Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, made the call in an open letter, urging President Buhari to direct the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, to publish the names of the alleged looters and prosecute them without further delay. In the letter, SERAP Deputy Director, Kolawali Ulua Dari, said it was in public interest to publish the names of those indicted in the audit report and ensure they are prosecuted. He further opined that such decisive steps would advance the victim's rights to restitution, compensation and guarantee non-repetition as well as improve confidence in the fight against corruption. Still from the presidency, uh, President Mohamed Buhari has uh, led administration has committed more resources to diversify the economy, economy than any previous administration. Uh, this was the position of the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, when he spoke at the inauguration of a poultry farm center established by the National Agricultural Land Development Authority, NALDA, in Gasamu, Jakuksu, local government area of Yobe State. Lawan said no past government had invested so much resources, particularly in agriculture, as the Bahari government has done. According to the Senate leader, Nigeria had been dependent on a single commodity, crude oil, 
But the APC-led government has progressed faster in its pursuit to diversify the economy, especially in the area of agriculture. Lawan thanked the president for giving the approval for the farm and fulfilling the promise he made in 2015 to provide employment opportunities for the youths. In other news, 330,000 Nigerian refugees are presently residing in neighboring countries due to the worsening insecurity in the country. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Farouk, said this while hosting a Chatham House webinar to discuss Nigeria's humanitarian challenges and worsening food crisis. According to the minister, the breakdown of the 330,000 Nigerians consists of 16,634 16, in Chad, 118,409 in Cameroon, while Nigeria Republic has 106,957 Nigerians. On steps taken to address the issue, Farouk said her ministry has launched two key frameworks aimed at boosting humanitarian actions and making them impactful. She said the first is the Humanitarian Development Peace Nexus Framework, which was derived from the UN Triple Nexus Principles, and the second is the Localization Framework, an initiative adopted by the com com commitment of stakeholders at the 2016 World Humanitarian Summit. You're listening to the World News at Noon and Comfort 95.1 FM. More stories after this message. Do stay tuned. Log on to www.comfort951fm.com to listen to us wherever you go or download our mobile app with your Android phone from Google Play Store. You can also like us on Facebook. That's facebook.com forward slash comfort 95.1 FM and on Instagram at comfort 951 FM. Now you have no excuse not to stay glued to your preferred dial. Comfort 95.1 FM, Uyo, your radio, your comfort. Hey, thanks for staying tuned. Now the rest of the world news at noon. The Northern Governors Forum is scheduled to convene an emergency meeting to discuss issues relating to the value added tax. VAT. The coordinator of the Northern Governors Forum Secretariat and Secretary to the Plateau State Government, Professor Dan Ladia too, confirmed the planned meeting in an interview. He said the meeting would be hosted by the Kaduna State Governor, Malam Nasser El Rafai, and presided over by the chairman of the forum and governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong. I too said the meeting became necessary after senior lawyers took on the Attorney General of the Federation Ababa, took the Attorney General of the Federation Abubakar Malami to court over his recent statement that no state had the power to lay claim to the collection of VAT in the country. Nigeria has recorded two hundred and 55 new COVID-19 infections with Emo State leading the infection chart. Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, reported the fresh cases and 13 COVID-19 related deaths on its website as the deadly virus continues to rage in Africa in its third wave. The health agency said the additional 255 cases raised the total number of infections to 204,456 while the fatality toll increased to 2,681. The NCDC noted the latest positive samples were recorded in five states in the FCT. Emo had 124, Lagos 72, FCT 35, River 16, Enugu 6, and Kano 1. In Aquabam State, a special interdenominational Thanksgiving service has been convened to mark the 34th anniversary celebration of Aquibum State and the 61st independence anniversary of Nigeria. The service with a the theme, there shall be a performance taken from Luke chapter 1 verse 45 and Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 took place at the United Evangelical Church number 165 Akar Road, Uyo. Governor Doe Emmanuel and wife Martha led a cross-section of top government officials 
traditional rulers and religious leaders, as well as a political class from within and outside of Kwaibom for the service. Mr. Emmanuel, who took the first Bible reading of the service from Luke chapter 1, verse 39 to 56, used the occasion to express gratitude to God for his blessings upon a Kwaibom state since creation. In his address, German Christian Association of Nigeria, a Kwaibom state chapter, Reverend Dwe pledged the support of Christians to the completion agenda and succession plan of Governor Dom Emmanuel. Comfort 95.1 affirmed Government House reporter Pressure to Doyang says the service featured renditions from Cathedral Mass Choir and the Christian Association of Nigeria Mass Choir, as well as prayers for the peace and prosperity of Akwaibam and Nigeria. Meanwhile, a Kwaibom state governor, Dom Emmanuel, has advised the people of the state to be wary of what he called unconstructive criticisms, which could be inimical to the growth and development of the state. Mr. Emmanuel made this known yesterday at primary school Ikorek Udo in Surabium local government area. During a Thanksgiving service organized by the Commissioner of Lands and Water Resources, Pastor Omoeno, and wife, Pastor Patience, to mark one year memorial of their mother and 35th marriage anniversary and appointment as a commissioner. The governor, who frowned on the level of blackmail peddled around persons occupying public office, observed that persistent falsehood could create enmity where none existed and encouraged leaders to be firm in taking the right decisions. Mr. Emmanuel thanked God for the life of Pastor Omoeno, who he said God has preserved for 35 years in marriage with wisdom to pilot the affairs of public office as a commissioner and the legacy of his mother, whose departure he continues to celebrate. Dr. Emmanuel said Pastor Eno's decision to organize a Thanksgiving showed his gratitude to God for giving him a mother who raised him to become a successful man and for sparing his wife's life and for giving him experience in office as a commissioner. Reflecting on God's mercies upon their lives, the Commissioner for Lands and Water Resources, Pastor Moino, and his wife, Pastor Patience, expressed appreciation to Governor Emmanuel for appointing him to serve a Kwaibom people as commissioner. He noted that the appointment has exposed him to public service, which added to his wealth of experience after having had a private sector background. And in sports, Nigeria's senior women's basketball team, D-Tigers, made history yesterday after winning the Afro Basket Championship for the third time in a row. The Nigerian team beat Mali 70-59 to to be crowned champions of the 2021 edition in Yaoundé, Cameroon. They first won, uh, they won the first quarter, 22-11, but the Malians bounced back to take the second quarter, 13-9, to make it a tight contest at halftime. The D Tigers won the previous editions of the championship in 2007 and 2019. And lastly, on the foreign scene, Germany's center left Social Democrats, SPD, have claimed victory in the federal election and defeated the party of outgoing Chancellor Angela Merkel. Leader of the winning party, S SPD, Olaf Scholz, said he has a clear mandate to form a new government while his conservative rival Armin Laschet remains determined to fight on. Mr. Scholl says it is time for a new coalition with the Greens and the Liberals. The two parties have governed together for four years. Preliminary results gave his party a narrow election win over the conservatives who suffered their worst ever performance at the elections. To end the, story, to end the news, uh, the major stories again, President Mohamed Buhari will tomorrow inaugurate the Police Barracks Special Protection Unit Base 6 at Domagua in Ikwere local government area of River State. And the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has said President Mohamed Buhari-led administration has committed more resources to diversify the economy than any previous administration. 
Uh, the Northern Governors Forum is scheduled to convene an emergency meeting to discuss issues relating to value-added tax. In sports, Nigeria's senior women's basketball team, D Tigers, have made history after winning the Afro Basket Championship for a third time in a row. And Germany's centre left Social Democrats, SPD, have claimed victory in the federal elections and defeated the party of our outgoing Chancellor, Angela Merkel. That's the Comfort FM World News at Noon, as edited by Esther Egariva Awarinde. For your news coverage, please call or send WhatsApp messages to our newsroom hotline on 0816-529-6908. I am George Iniabasi Sien, wishing you a very lovely day as you keep it dialogue locked right here on Comfort 95.1 FM. Up next is the EBBO News. Good afternoon. Afu sogo pangu tongono Comfort 95.1 FM uyo Comfort 95.1 FM a kemu tangi kofu a nyede ineme chilefu Ka tiero Amia Kanika Dweba Ueme yo abu yo ke minik e frenang ini mbong pontepe.